You can be seated this morning. Can we put our hands together for the Lord? Thank you, Pastor Lee, Nicole, the whole team. Thank you, Joe. That was a powerful song. I'm delighted and excited that I have been invited to Mission Sunday at New Covenant Fellowship. My name is Chance. My, my wife and family, they just left the building. I've got four babies. Come on. And uh, they're going home. We live in Greensboro. My parents are here. I'm originally from Siler City. I'm a graduate of Sand Hills Teen Challenge. Yeah. I'm a full-time itinerant evangelist. We preach the gospel in some of the most unreached areas in the world, like Carthage. Come on. <laughs> and I've been to 34 nations, 49 states. I'm missing North Dakota. There's hope for them. Um, I was missing Hawaii. We went to Hawaii last year. And uh, I don't know. I'm just happy. Are you happy this morning? I'm so happy that God saved me and set me free. And I have the honor to, to share God's word with you this morning. And if you have a Bible, uh, I want you to turn with me to the Luke, uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. And I want to read verses 40 through 45. And if you would, could we stand to our feet to honor God's word just one more time, if you can, as it is our custom. I didn't share this in the first um, service, but we were just in the Dominican Republic a couple of weeks ago. The guy running our product table, his name is Johnny Ross, and he uh, is staying with us f um, for a week or so, and he led the worship for our gospel crusade while we were there this past May. And I just wanted to share, we had 15,886 people and 1,545 people gave their life to Jesus at the event. Amen. So that's good news. Everybody say good news. That's good news. But, so, you know, some greater news is two people gave their life to Jesus at the first service this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, and so we're going to give you an opportunity to respond to, respond to God this morning in the service. Um, um, because the hound dog of heaven is in here. Somebody say amen. amen. Everybody say, I love my Bible. Love my Bible. Somebody say, I need, to read it more. I need to read it more. Now look at your neighbor and say, my Bible's better than yours. <laughs> because it's genuine leather. I'm just kidding. Luke chapter 1, verses 40 through 45 the Bible says, at that time, Mary got ready. Everybody say, get ready. And she hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear, but why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped. Everybody say leap. He leaped for joy, for blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And then Mary began to sing. I'll stop right there this morning. Would you pray with me? Lord, we love you. We've heard so many reports about what you are doing around the world. In Jerusalem, Judea, as I like to say, some area, and to the uttermost parts of the world. And it's Mission Sunday, and we just came here. We just came to celebrate all that you are doing um, in us and through us. And so we salute you this morning, and we just want to say thank you. That's why we stood up we, and that's why we came, God, because you have been so good to us. But we believe that their best days are before us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. You can be seated this morning. I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but I just want to plant this seed in the soil 
of your heart this morning when I was in prayer thinking about you. Um, you know, this church is so special to me. I remember the bubble church, you know, it's what we used to call it, and all of the phases of growth that has been happening here the past 20 years is just amazing to me, and I was praying, and the Lord put this passage in my heart, and it's really simple, but I pray that you would grab a hold of it, because in Luke chapter 1, we see the birth of John the Baptist, and according to Scripture, we know that he had hundreds of years of prophecy being spoken over his life. I like to say the Old Testament, Jesus Christ concealed. The New Testament, Jesus Christ revealed. The apocalypse of God's will. And we see this man by the name of John the Baptist. And in Isaiah chapter 40, we see a verse that... Um, um, it proclaims that this man would be a voice in verse 3, crying out in the wilderness, saying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And then in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, the last prophet of the Old Testament prophesied, and this is what he said. He said, There's going to be a baby born. And he's going to be the forerunner of Christ, and he will come in the spirit and the power of Elijah, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to towards the sons and the hearts of the sons towards the fathers. Just to give you a little context as we flip into the New Testament, we see Gabriel the archangel making a declaration to the high priest as he was serving in the temple. And what did he say? He said, don't be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. How many of y'all have been praying? Amen. God, God hears you, and you're going to have a son. Even though you and Elizabeth are well advanced in age, and, and he, you're going to have a baby, and you're going to call him John, for he will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of God as he brings many people back into a relationship with the Lord. And uh, it's amazing to me that all of these words were foretold by the prophets before one of them came to be. Isaiah, 700 B.C., Malachi, 430 years before Christ, way before John the Baptist shows up on the scene. But I want you to see that these prophecies prepared the way for John as John prepared the way for the king. The prophecies were spoken before one of these days actually came into fruition. And, and the prophecies were preparing the way for him, but John prepared the way for him. Are y'all with me here this morning? And sometimes we just need to grab a hold of the him of who he is because he is the one who can change our life. And this is what John was called to do. He was called to prepare the way for the king. This was his purpose. This was his assignment. Even before he was born, this is the reason for him being raised up, says the Lord. When you boil it all down, this was his uh, mandate to tell his generation, the generation that he lived in, that the king is coming. Everybody say, the king is coming. His kinsman redeemer, our Lord and Savior, this was John's eternal mandate. In John chapter 1 verse 29, the first thing that we see him doing, we see him baptizing people in the desert and then Jesus walks by and he says, behold the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Everybody say, take them away. As far as the east is from the west, he buries them in the bottom of a sea of forgetfulness. This is what John was doing while he was breathing. And whenever I read these verses earlier this week, I thought the, these, these references are so relevant for us in this period of history. Because how many of you know that the eternal time clock is ticking? If you were to say, Chance, what time is it? 
I would say it's 1130. Proverbs 1130 says, for he who wins souls is wise. Are y'all with me here this morning? It's 1130 and Jesus is coming back soon. But think about this. John the Baptist was sent to be a forerunner for Christ, and thankfully, he fulfilled the prophecy that was upon his life. But amazingly, there's a prophecy being spoken over your life. From the beginning of time, there is a word that is piercing your heart and soul this morning. You were supposed to be here. You could be anywhere this morning. You could be doing anything with your life, but you chose to wake up and to come into this room to hear from God. And I believe in Psalm 139, before you were formed and fashioned in your mother's womb, God knew you. Listen to me, young people. Every one of you, before One of your days came to be, the Bible says, that they were written down in a book. And God knew that that you would be in a place to hear and to be used by God. The Bible goes on to say that you are a chosen generation, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Look at your neighbor and say, you're special. Look at your other neighbor and say, you're really special. Come on, somebody. (laughs) And just as you spoke, God is still speaking and talking to a very select group of people who dwells on the earth with a predetermined purpose, a prophecy being spoken over their life. And and I can't stress this enough on Mission Sunday. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. It doesn't matter what your job description is uh, in this world. God is calling you to tell your generation that the king is coming. Amen. What is your role right now? It doesn't matter if you're a stay-at-home mom. It doesn't matter if you're a school teacher, a principal, a business owner. It really doesn't matter. We just opened two thrift stores in Greensboro. And, and we're super busy, but, but I call it undercover church because people walk in our doors and they don't know what they're walking into. And I can tell that they look around and go, what is this? What am I feeling right now? And I just say, calm down and, and, and chill out. It's just Jesus. And in just two or three short months, we've got so many testimonies. And I want you to grab a hold of this this morning because God is calling you and God is calling me to prepare ye the people to get our generation ready to meet their maker. Just like John prepared the way for the king, this is now our responsibility. And the torch has been passed to the 21st century church. And we, we, we can't give up now. Our best days are not behind us. Our, our best days are before us. Somebody say amen. So tell your family, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your coworkers, amen, that God is real. The Bible is relevant and true. And God really does love you. And this was John's message. And friend... This is our message. Everybody say he's getting ready to close. You know what that means, right? Absolutely nothing. Some of y'all are not laughing. But I know something you don't know. You're about to get hit with the Holy Ghost. And God's going to do something in your life. And you know the story, Mary received a prophecy, I am almost finished, that's why I'm talking slow, that the a Holy Spirit would overshadow her, and I feel God in this room. And the Bible says that she would be with a child, 
But the word will always come in seed form. God planted a seed in Mary's belly. And then she carried this seed out into the world. And the seed began to change the atmosphere that she stepped into. Mary left her house, I'll say the house of God, and she went to her cousin's house. And when she walked in the door, Elizabeth began to shout. And she turned her frown upside down. And she felt something on the inside of her. And it was, it was her baby. It was John the Baptist. This word turned his life around. And the baby began to leap. And then she began to sing. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say when, when you hear God's word, something on the inside of you begins to change. It, it, it stirs you up. It, 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 it makes you move. It, it makes you happy. It, it makes you sing. And so there's a word on the inside of you that the world is waiting for. Come on, somebody. I mean, we've got the answer to the world's problems. Jesus Christ is the only one that can make America great again. Somebody say amen. I'm not a politician. I'm a preacher. I'm an evangelist. I came to give you good news. Amen. I've got many, many sermons, but I've only got one message, and my message has a name, and his name is Jesus, and he has the power to change your life forever. And I'll calm down tomorrow, but right now, right now, We've got to take our role, do we not, and be responsible to share the message that we have heard. Christianity cruise control? Come on, no. we got to go. I've got an evangelist missionary training school in Greensboro, and our motto is to put the go. Everybody say go. We got to put the go back into the gospel. And we've been hearing that message this morning. And I just hope that God does something in your heart as you sit here. God will rescue you and, and, and he'll pull you out of the deepest, darkest pit. But he will not pull you out of your recliner. Come on, somebody. You've got to stand up and you've got to go. And when you do, so goes God. Because there's a seed. Some of you have been hearing the Holy Spirit. And he's been speaking to you. And you've been timid and you've been afraid. And you're, you're worried about what everybody else is going to think. But we've heard the testimony of the goodness of God. And what he is doing around the world, I always say, you can reach the world from right where you are. All the way from right here, we can touch the ends of the earth. And you guys partner with us and you pray for us. I leave for Fiji in a few weeks. I'm so sorry, somebody's got to go. And it's a collaboration, other ministries. We're going to the main island of Fiji for a week. And we're literally going to shake that island with the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's events and crusades going on all across the South Pacific Islands. And then the following month, I'll be in Pakistan. Who wants to go? Raise your hand. I feel something in here. God sees your hand. Hallelujah. And then the next month, I'll be in Brazil. And so whenever... You guys pray and partner. We do it together with Unity Fest and so many others. This is the church doing together what we could not do by ourselves. I feel like I'm preaching way much better than y'all are responding this morning. Thanks, Johnny. Everybody say Johnny Ross. All the way from the Dominican Republic. And I'm going to ask Joe. Everybody say Joe. I'm going to ask Joe to come help me land this plane. You guys are putting the go back into the gospel. I travel school to school, church to church, country to country. And I told Pastor Lee this morning, not everybody does what you guys are doing. And my heart is so moved <laughs> that we get to be a part of it. You guys are mission-minded, and this is the mind of Christ. He was the greatest missionary, was he not? He left heaven, 
And he came to our home. And then he sent us the Holy Spirit, the greatest evangelist. That's why I'm so happy. I got God bumps on my goofs bumps. Amen. I feel him. Has he changed your life? I know he has. And you guys are changing the world. And I'm going to ask you, if you can, to stand one more time as we conclude this story. I chopped a little bit of my message, but there's so many of you that have taken two steps forward, three steps back. (laughs) You're trying. You've even tried church. And you've been hurt, and I get it. Me too. (laughs) But you're here, (laughs) and the devil has been trying to deter the prophecy being spoken over your life. Did you think I would have thought that I would be here 21 years later as a drug addict and an alcoholic right down the street. No, not me. (laughs) Well, how did I get here? I'm so glad you asked. I took a million simple, small steps of faith. It wasn't a big leap, (laughs) you know, a giant leap for mankind. No, I get up every morning. And, and, and I put on my clothes. Aren't you glad? I put on my, my jacket, my jacket this morning because I mean business with God. Come on, somebody. And it's the greatest sermon you'll ever preach or hear is the sermon that you preach to yourself. Oh, you're going to do this. You were born for such a time as this. And many of you have been trying, and it's like a, 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 a rubber band, you know, uh, A yo-yo. The devil keeps pulling you back, pulling you back. But today, we're going to pray that God would set you free. Amen? Because just like John fulfilled the prophecy that was spoken over his life, you're going to fulfill the prophecy that is spoken over your life. And every person in here is special. Every person in here, I'm telling you, God has a very specific and strategic plan for your life. And your life matters. It matters so much more than you think. And and many of you are doing way better than you think. And you're going to make it. Everybody say, I'm going to make it. Everybody say, he's getting ready to close. So Jesus made a statement, and I am closing, that out of all the people in the Bible, and then I want to open the altar. Out of all the people in the Bible, John the Baptist was the greatest. Who's the goat? Who's the greatest of all time? Jesus said John the Baptist. And that's a pretty big statement. John is the greatest. But we have to make a mental note that John the Baptist didn't start out great. He didn't start his ministry preaching powerful sermons. He didn't start his ministry out in the wilderness baptizing the multitudes and ministering to presidents and and kings and priests. Even though he would do all of these things later in his life, how do we know? The Bible tells us so. We read how the king came down to the inner chamber and talked to John in private. I mean, he was a mighty man of God. I mean, we're still talking about his life today. This man beheld so much glory. But, but you may be asking, where did it all begin? It began when he took a leap. It's Mission Sunday. Pastor Lee said it's time to do something. I want to say it a little differently. And thanks for waiting for the title of my message. It's time to take a leap. In his mama's belly, in the midst of childlike faith, while nobody else was looking, he began to leap. And this is a key. God doesn't want you to start where John stopped. Jesus said there's no greater person than John. And we think we have to start out great. No, all we have to do is start out with 
God. And this is the heart of the gospel. You don't have to start out great. You start out with God, and one day you'll think, how in the world did I get here? I'll tell you how you got here. You got here because of God. And you'll get there because of God. Everybody say, I'm going to make it. I just came to shoot you up with faith this morning. You're going to make it. Every single last one of you are going to make it because God is the greatest. And I want to encourage you in closing, whatever the Lord is asking you to do, take a leap. Maybe you need to give your life to God. Maybe you need to be baptized next Sunday. Maybe you need to start tithing. Maybe you need to start serving. Uh, Maybe you need to go on a short-term mission trip. Um, Maybe you you need to repent. (laughs) Whatever the Lord is asking you to do, I'm encouraging you this morning to take a leap. With every head bowed and every eye closed and nobody looking around, I just want to ask this question before we sing. If there's anybody in this room, see, John wasn't waiting on a move of God. John the Baptist was a move of God. And God's already moving in this room. And maybe you've heard a word and you were to say, Chance, I need to make a change. I need to give my life to Jesus today. If that's you with every head bowed and every eye closed and nobody looking around, I just want you to lift your hand. We had two people this morning, and I'm not going to embarrass you, but heaven knows what you need. You were to say, Chance, I really need a change. I need to ask Christ into my life today. Would you lift your hand this morning? All over this room. You can put them down. Number two, you were to say, Chance... I want to take a leap. There's something that God is asking me to do. And it doesn't have to be, like, profound. It could be something simple. What is the Holy Spirit asking you to do in this moment? And I'm going to give you a minute to make up your mind because I sense that the Holy Spirit is moving. If you could ask God to do anything for you, something that you need to do, what would it be this morning? And if you need to take a leap, I want you to lift your hand. Lastly, all over this room, all over this room, I need to make a leap. I need to make a leap. It's Mission Sunday. It's time to do something. And Lord Jesus, as we begin to sing, I pray that you would seal this word in our hearts as we think about all that you've done and all that you want to do. God, you're amazing. And we thank you for not giving up on us. And we thank you, God, that you're the greatest. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.